Hey everybody, welcome back. So, I have these two kits that my friend Russ Litchfield sent to me. And this one is in the uh, plastic and that one is still taped up the way Ravel makes it. This is a Heller, that's a Ravel. Um, I want to open them up. I've been waiting. I wanted to include you guys. Some of you guys may not be interested in this stuff at all. But anything kind of odd or <laughs> kind of wacky is just right up my alley. Um, I wouldn't think that the French people would think this car was wacky at all because, you know, if you've seen like Chevy Chase, European Vacation or anything, I'm, those probably were everywhere in that movie. Uh, just a staple of a French family, probably. Uh, I was watching recently... I love to watch these remastered videos from the 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever. And there was a French video from the, I guess it was the 30s. I'm still not sure what year. I think it was a video. Of, anyway, I, I, I saw some cars. They were, obviously they were, uh, oh, really quick, side note. How to pronounce Citroen. And I think that's how you pronounce it. I looked up a quick video on the YouTube and it says... Let's see if it'll play. Citroen. Citro. It's like Citroen. Citroen. Okay. So uh, anyway, I, the video I was watching, the old remaster, had a bunch of Citroens in it, and uh, you can see the design on the uh, the grill and things like that. They really stand out. They were just everywhere in this city uh, video. So yeah, I can't wait to see this thing. And I can't wait to build them. This kind of stuff just really interests me. So, and I hope it interests you guys too. It's a model car. It may not be a hot rod. Although, anybody ever pro streeted a Citroen 15 CV? I bet they haven't. And uh, that would be very unique. Don't know if I'd do that or not. But anyway, and this is the Citroen 2 CV. Uh, Cocorico. Cocorico. Coco Cocorico. Again, phonics, not my strong point. Um, I graduated school because I think they just got tired of me. I did well more years than I was supposed to, but I did make it out of there. But I think sometimes they just decide to get rid of you, and they, the easiest way to do it is get you a diploma. So, um, Phonics, though, man, I struggle with it. I can read great, pretty good, average, fair. I think I can read pretty good. But some words, like, if you wanted me to spell uh, Cocorico, I might could spell that, but it's like, I'm not like the spelling bee, guys. Um, can I have the origin of the word Cocorico? And could I have it in a uh, sentence uh, and, and, and all this stuff? I, that didn't help me a bit. Not one bit. So let's unload this thing. Ooh. So this is one of those Ravel Germany kits. Oh, the body's in there. All by itself. This has never been opened. Russ, Russ never opened this. Thank you so much for this, Russ. This is a wonderful gift. Oh, man. That is so... What a odd car. What an odd car. Wow, what a book of instructions here. Let's see, there is some other stuff floating around. I got some mesh. Okay. Wow. And I know, I think that the, some of the Ravel USA... I don't know. I don't know if Ravel USA has the instruction books like this, but I know this is a, uh, I say I know, pretty sure this is Ravel Germany. Let's see. Wow. It's got every language in the book. Let me see if I can find on here. Um, okay, here we go. Ravel is a, yep. Uh, which that stickers over it, but. Ravel of Germany. Made in Poland. Cool. And there's a picture again of it. The Citroen 2 CV. Coca Rico. That does not sound French. That sounds, uh, well, I don't know if it sounds Spanish or not. Coca Rico. Wow, nice, nice, nice instruction booklet here. It does have an engine, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's got a, it's got an air cooled. You can see the top portion of it right there, air cooled. Super cool. I'm kind of partial to air cooled. Well, you know what? 
I don't think it is. I think that's an actual, maybe a radiator in there. I don't know. We'll see. But um, I am partial to air-cooled stuff. Got the two VW Beetles, but I'm looking to sell those things. I'll never, all the engines in the front. I was thinking the engine was in the back for some reason. Um, I'm looking to sell my Beetles. They're, they're, they're just never going to get, I'm just never going to get around to it. Uh, my life has changed directions and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I got a 70 and a 70, uh, hold on. I got a 70 and a 72. Both 1600 cc. Matter of fact, the engines are right there. One's a dual port 1600 that goes in the 72 original engine. One's a single port 1600 that goes in the 70 because in 1970 the 1600 was single port. Single port's easier to deal with too because you don't have this. Yeah, not really any easier, but it seems more simple. Go ahead and get some of this tape undone here so we can look at some of these cool parts. But yeah, I got to get rid of the Beatles. They're taking up space and somebody could enjoy those things and uh, have two really cool cars. They're all, I have almost everything. I got the cars, they were running cars. Obviously when you go to restore something, you totally disassemble it. And things like the seats, obviously I've got the skeleton of the seats. They have to be re, re padded and re everything um, as well as the interiors and all the interior stuff but anyway all right so i'm just looking to see what we got here all right so body first so here is our little citroen with some major fender skirts citroen 2c v coca rico and it has lots of braces to keep it because it would be very fiddly if you didn't it does have an opening hood just a nice looking little model kit body very very well made I see um, one body or a parting line here and here very easy to get rid of those I don't really see anymore they put them in the right spots there is a very small one back here that you'd probably never see anyway but yeah super cool Let's see what's in the uh, chassis color bag so there's part of our engine I'm assuming it's probably a twin cylinder I haven't looked zero uh, research on this thing like like fuel lines or something like there fuel lines probably maybe brake lines fuel lines I don't know a little cooling fan it's like a sump for the oil looks like it's finned to displace heat uh, that's what that is there's your fan shroud I'm thinking this thing may be air cooled there's your firewall and other exhaust it's like sus rear, maybe rear uh, swing arm style suspension similar to a Volkswagen what it would be probably a torsion on, torsion bar or something like that would be under there there's your nicely detailed chassis it looks almost like a fighter jet it's got like missiles coming out of it. Not sure what those are. Those are shocks of some sort. Citroen, I know they had a really uh, unique suspension system. Um, and it may be something to do with these tanks. From what I heard from Jay Leno's garage, some of them had like a fluid type of suspension system. And uh, I think that's really cool. And more than likely, that's what all those parts there are in representation of there's another one of those swing arm type um, suspensions there's your fi uh, fender wall fender wall well fender inner fender well fender wells yeah there's some bumpers uh, the bumpers look like they would be not body color but more of a off-white body being white and the bumpers a little bit different which is neat I like that and here are those gigantic they look like 20 22s or something on there man they were sporting it back in the day got the three lugs I've seen plenty of three lug stuff in my lifetime wasn't supposed to be three lugs but when you ring one off or something like that or you lose one and it's a four lug well you got a three lug but these were intentionally three lugs so there's your inner and outer wheels and it has um, 
hubcaps that goes over those wheels that are right here in the chrome tree. Beautiful chrome tree. There's your, there's your uh, hubcaps, your beautiful little Citroen uh, grill. However, that goes in there. Looks like maybe it's upside down. Probably goes like that. And uh, some other, looks like headlight buckets, possibly. Yep. It's like, well, I don't know. Because it's got, got, it does have chrome around the headlights. I don't know, I'll have to see. Windshield wipers, mirrors, and those kind of things. And then for the car interior. I don't even know what year. Maybe the instructions, I'll look again what year car this is. I always like forget the details, forget to look up stuff. I'm like, oh, cool, let's make a video. And uh, no research whatsoever. And then I get, you know, corrected by you guys, but I'm asking for it, right? So there's the interior. Man, this is super nice. What a really, really nice model kit. Here's your interior door panels. Had some kind of little slide latches right there for maybe opening the doors or something, possibly. It's got some got some seat belts. That's nice. Those like actually look really, really good. Steering column. Looks like a console of some sort. There's your steering wheel. I've seen steering wheels like this before. And it looks like if you got in a bad accident it would just bend because it only had a single connecting point. But maybe over let's see. I have a friend that's going to Japan. To, uh, work he's civil service works at the same place I do but he's transferring to Japan to a military base over there and he said over there in Japan he told me the car that he is gonna buy it's like a Toyota something like a RAV4 he said but it's a Japanese version it's right-hand drive and he said it was only five thousand dollars and it's a really low mileage car and it's not very old and and I was like wow really he's like but the cars over there your speed limit generally is like really slow. They don't have an Autobahn or I don't, I don't think they have a lot of interstates or something. I don't guess. He's about 45 minutes out of Tokyo. He's at a military base that's on the coast. Um, but he said like those cars don't even have safety glass or anything like that. So they can make them um, cheaper because they're not having to go through the expense of all the, the safety features that United States cars have because of high speed crashes and things. So maybe this car with that steering wheel, they didn't go that fast. So, you know, a head on impact wouldn't be that severe or if you came to a stop really fast, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying the, the steering wheels are very unique on these cars. There's your, uh, no, what the heck? That's the hood. That's the hood right there. I thought some kind of roof. Yeah, that's the hood. Really, really, uh, got a lot of, uh, creases in it to give it that strength there's the roof there is the front I believe the front yeah the front windshield right there and some kind of little oh okay so this would be like a convertible top yeah, yeah, yeah. and I guess if you wanted to have it rolled up look at that that's pretty cool it's got like a rolled up um, convertible top right there and then some real intricate things looks like seat mounts possibly Probably the seat backs. Nice little seat mounts. Uh, maybe some kind of sway bar or something like that. And some other parts that I can't identify. Except I do see a rear view mirror right there. And then here are your seats. So your rear seats already have... It's raining outside. Rear seats have the seat belts in there. Those look really nice. Uh, maybe a little chore to detail paint those. But really nice seats. It looks like the seat is upside down. Is it? No, I guess that is how it goes. Because the back is almost like shorter than the... What's well, about equal? And the front seats, which are upside down here. And there's another grill. Now, is that the same thing? Is that like if you don't want to use the chrome grill? It is. So they give you an optional grill that I guess you can paint body color. And it doesn't have the Citroen uh, badging on it pretty neat and then let's check out the tires I did open this one Let's 
see what the tires look like. Oh, cool. Look at that. Some very, almost like all-terrain type tires. Very nice. Very soft and pliable. Uh, yeah, those are cool. I won't show you all four because they're all the same. Now, they look bigger in the picture, but I'm sure it's skilled properly. I got that, got that, got that, got that. And then there's the glass. And I won't take this out because I want to keep it protected. But all, quite a bit of glass. Look at all that. There's your front front and rear, side, quarter, or... Oh, well, it's got three windows on the side. So you got uh, front seat, back seat, or front door, back door. And then behind the back door, there is this little window right there. It's got a lot of glass. You, no, they couldn't... Uh, another safety feature, man. No blind spots. So that's cool. Very nice. Okay, I'm gonna cut the camera. Come right. I'm gonna clean this one up. Come right back. We'll check out the Citroen 15 CV by Heller. Okay, so before I get everything put up, I forgot to show the decals, and I just looked up the the car. It says the Citroen 2 CV Cocorico was produced in 1986 and was the last special edition. 2CV to be built in France. The 2CV is a French economy car that was produced from 1948 to 1990. And the Cocorico is one of many limited editions of this car. So, 1986. I would have never, ever guessed that. That was a 1986. <laughs> but you know what? That's cool. I would drive it. You know what I'm saying? If I had one, I would, I would sure drive it. Pretty, pretty interesting. 1986. Okay, so I forgot to show the decals, and there was a uh, a piece of let's see what is this? That's just cardboard to protect it. So there is a mesh fabric here that probably is for the um, engine compartment or behind the radiator or behind the grill rather. And then there is the decal sheet. Check it out. Got all the cool decals. Got something for the fan because the fan, by the way, there was a clear piece of in the, the clear plastics. Uh, this would be like part of what would be the fan. Here is something for behind the uh, I saw those two, they were clear behind the uh, in the trunk area or something like a I don't know some kind of cover. And there's your odometer, some uh, pin striping. I ain't pin striping. What's that black stuff for? I may go on the interior, the doors, and uh, this goes below the front windshield, right under, because you got, it's the sport model, man, you got to have the 2CV Cocorico, people got to know what you're driving, you know what I mean, and then all kind of different, uh, I guess, French um, license plates, pretty darn cool, hey, look at there, Cocorico. Coco, I don't know what that means, but probably Coco Rico 86. There's quite a few 86s buried in those numbers. So, yeah, must be a 1986 Coco Rico. So, I'm going to do something that's cool. I've seen on other videos. I'm going to clap my hands. This stuff's going to disappear just like this. Bam. How was that? Wasn't that some cool, like, uh, special effects? I think so. Let me lighten this up just a touch. Oh, wrong way. There we go. All right, so here's the Heller Citroen 15 CV, and I didn't look up the year model on that one. Let's. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna take a guess. I'm gonna say 1939. I'm probably way off because I thought that 86 would have been from the 60s or the 50s or something. So let's do this. Uh, Citroen 15 CV. Let's do 15. Team CV years of, years of production and I'm in a metal box so the signals not good 38 to 55 man I said 39 now I could be wrong on this one but it doesn't have oh yeah it does too yeah, that's it right there 38 to 55. Okay, so the Citroen uh, 15 CV, also known as the Traction 
Avante, av, av, Avant, Avant, <laughs> or the Queen of the Road was produced in France from 38 to 55. The 15 CV was the first car in the world to be built with uh, mono co co q co key architecture. Uh, I see how I can't pronounce this. It's like Heather's great with phonics. I'm not. Anyway, mono co q e <laughs> architecture. That was fa and it was a favorite in motorsports films, chase scenes, the modern, uh, the model uh, designation 15 CV refers to the French fiscal horsepower rating of 15. Chavez Vapier. Is that right? Chavez Vapier. Maybe. So 15. Fiscal horsepower rating of 15 Chavez Vapier. I don't know if that's 15 horsepower or not. But anyway, we're fixing to look at this thing. All right. You know what? Did I read something on here? I did. This one says... I, I remember now doing the video when Russ gave it to me. Presented at 34 motors at home. But it said 38. Oh, well. We're going to take Google's word for it. How does this open? I'm going to go straight across like this. We're going to tear into it. Oh yeah, I forgot. Hellers are made in France. So this is a sure enough French car made by a French company. I forgot all about that. Very cool. Let me cut this. And it's got their their flag and all the that's pretty neat, man. I forgot all about Heller being a French company. Well, it says Fabrique in N E N Francais. Man, I am I should take a trip to France. I would not even be able to ask where the restroom is at. Uh oh, I got some tape going on right here. There we go. Okay. And I think this is a fairly new model kit. There's Heller Aviation. I think Heller is a cool model company. They build odd, well, I like it because it's the odd peculiar this is all airplane stuff but I, I just think think this is the cool stuff there's the instruction booklet with the beautiful box of the box that I have there's some decals that are I think they've got a film over them I need to take off there's that not many decals on this car Very nice instructions. Six cylinder. No, man, it's not 15 horses. There's no way that an uh, inline six had 15 horsepower. So I don't know what uh, fiscal or whatever it was horsepower means. I'm not sure about that. Maybe you guys can help me in the comment section. So here's the body got some scratches on it but that's okay they'll come right out heller makes a really thin body um not that i i knew that i didn't know that already i mean i've got some heller kits but i really never paid attention but this is the plastic is super thin which there's no problem at all with that and i bet this comes from some pretty old molds to be honest with you look at that man that's cool single piece body i did build the heller Oh, shoot, what was it? It's a 30 something model car and it had a multi piece body. And uh, it was, it had some difficulties, but it still was a very nice kit. There's your front fenders and uh, some firewall ish stuff. The lower portion of the uh, your floor pans got your gas tank with the straps holding it in there or fuel tank. Got the Heller emblem embossed in the underside which will be covered up with interior all right let's see make sure i'm looking at the right side yeah so we got five lug wheels on this citroen got bumper mounts it appears don't know what those things are right there here's some looks like front suspension parts valve cover battery it's like a six volt system obviously back in the what late 30s 
you know, six volt was pr pretty much, I don't know if anything had 12 volt at the time. Looks like exhaust pipes got duels, man. That reminds me so much of my nephew, Tyler, which is a grown adult now. Tyler's near 30 years old, but when he was a kid, we had, we kept Tyler so much and he's like a son and he would, I remember his dad would tell me when they were traveling around, if Tyler saw a car with two mufflers, uh, <laughs> That automatically meant it was fast. Daddy, that thing, I bet that, that car's got two mufflers, Daddy. It, it'll probably go 100 miles. And he meant 100 miles per hour. But yeah, those, that's funny stuff. Yeah, it's got two mufflers, man, or two exhaust pipes. I don't know if it's got two mufflers. It's like that's probably, no, nah, that's not a muffler. I don't know what that is. Here's a portion of the engine. Maybe it was, it was not air-cooled. But that probably is a flywheel. Almost looks like a transfer case. Maybe it had a drive line. I'll take a look at the instructions. Drive line went to maybe a transfer case. That looks like a flywheel of some sort. Probably uh, like your old hit and miss engines that had a lot of uh, rotating weight. So it would start or idle idle low and, and get going with, with minimal exertion on the engine. There's the starter, some other pulleys, shocks. And... Uh, your spare tire hey, oh man here's, here's the engine yeah it's got a funky looking uh oh got a funky looking transmission and all it's like almost it's like the starter would be mounted up high or something i'm not sure got a got a six banger going on there's your um radiator this not sure but that's probably something to do with the cooling. Maybe coming off the radiator or something like that. Fender wells, inner fender wells. Probably some rear fender wells or something like that. Other suspension parts. There's like a straight, um, it's like a straight axle that your suspension would probably hook to. Here's some interior parts and the hood. There's your inner door panels. Had rever looks like reverse doors for the rear. I guess if I looked at the. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have reverse doors. Looks like the rear. Back the rear doors did have the uh, handle back. Oh, the front doors are reversed. Okay. Huh. So yeah, they hinged in the center there. Oh, check it out. So really, I forget what they call those things. But a lot of your German cars and, and stuff would have it. If you notice, and I think that's what this is. It may not be. It looks like it's got those turn signals that would pop out right here on the side, possibly. I don't know if it is or not, but it kind of looks like the, uh, your old Volkswagen's 50s. Um, what did they call those things? Darn it. Um, but they would, when you turn a blinker on like in a Volkswagen, this little thing would pop out and light up. It was so people could know you're turning. It was, I can't remember what they call those now been too long but it almost looks like it would have something like that maybe not what are those things called dang it if you're a Volkswagen guy you can probably tell me but it looks like it might have had them because it's got definitely got something there don't know all right let's look at this there's your interior there's your seats front rears more suspension parts may have been no it wasn't in you know what was it a front wheel drive i think it might be front wheel drive yes yes look at that so it looks like a transaxle it looks like a uh or a a drive axle would come out that's like a transaxle hmm okay cool so probably a front wheel drive car there's your dashboard. It looks awful modern. Like it looks like it would have a digital display, but it wouldn't. Um, your your hood. Two sides. I guess it would flip up. And I thought these would have something. So those look like side compartment, like bags that would open up on your um, for some storage. You know, just kind of pop open. And then here are the tires for the Citroen 15 CV. And they 
are also somewhat of an all-terrain looking tire. Maybe because of a lot of snow in France. I guess it snows a lot in France. But these tires look like they have somewhat of an all-terrain type tread uh, tread pattern. So, very, very cool. Both of these are 124th scale. They're both European, um, France and Germany, obviously. Uh, Ravel Germany. Um, I don't know if Ravel Germany does all their kits in 124 scale, but because they're producing European cars and um, for the most of the world, 124th is the predominant uh, scale. Um, I guess maybe Ravel Germany does that. I don't know, but your Heller kits are going to be 124th if they're cars and stuff like that. So anyway, very, very cool stuff. So again, thanks to Russ. Russ Litchfield for sending me these two very cool kits. I can't wait, cannot wait to to dig in and, and start working on these. As soon as this video is over, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to work on my Model A. I want to try and finish that thing up. It's been sitting there too long. Um, I've been busy, been very busy. Um, yesterday, I went and picked up about 2,000 pounds, maybe 2,500 pounds of 1x8 um, 20 foot long one by eight rough cut pine boards um, from my stepdad he's got a sawmill worked very hard loading and unloading those boards by hand and we'll take some of them to a planer mill and get them planed for the flooring in our kitchen which is gonna be really nice so that was a day not all day but it was it was a uh, quite the job get them all stacked up and go through the boards and figure out which ones I wanted to pull out for the flooring some of the good heart pine that's some beautiful wood but um yeah man busy life busy life but hey who does it to us i do i do it i don't blame anybody i'm just busy all the time i like being busy i, I it it it's it's good I, I i appreciate busy um but sometimes it's good to sit down and work on a model kit and i don't do that as much as i used to but i put it on myself not to mention i do a lot of 3d printing and if you hadn't already gone over to mcvproducts.net, go over, go over, uh, check out what I got to offer there. Give Ellie something to do. Her and Miss Heather, as a matter of fact, they pack a lot of orders. And uh, for the month of June, if you hadn't already, for every ten dollars that you spend at mcvproducts.net, you are automatically entered for a drawing of a two hundred dollar gift certificate from MCV products and uh, two model kits which are behind me it's a Jaguar XKE and a 32 Ford Street Rob both of them Ravel kits so those will be uh, everybody that has purchased in the month of June that drawing will take place early July and uh, we'll pick a winner for the $200 gift card and the two model kits I'll send those out to you the gift certificate code and the kits and it'll be fun so I appreciate all the business there. But as always, don't forget to go check out HobbyDumpModels.com. Mark is also running an extended Memorial Day sale. I think it runs to the end of June or right at the end of June. And uh, go over there and get you a great deal on a model kit, some paint, everything he's got to offer. Go check it out, HobbyDumpModels.com. These are both linked in the description of the videos. Thank you to my Patreon members for all that you do and everybody in the community that has contributed to my channel. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks again to Russ Litchfield for sending me these two kits, and I can't wait to get on them. All right, guys, you take care. We'll see you soon. Bye.